Would you kill me? It's all right, miss. We want to help you. I don't believe you anymore. What do you think, Mr. Hale? She's come a long way on foot. She's half dead of Thurston's son. Let's get her to the train. What kept you? My horse picked up a rock. What do you suppose a woman like this is doing wandering around out here? I don't know. I don't suppose we'll find that out till she can talk. Let's get her on the horse. Water. They're drowning me. Nick. It's all I'm right. Drenched. It's all right. No. You're with friends now. No. The water is closing up. It's so cold. Got fever dreams. They're taken that way with cholera. You're safe now. No one here is going to hurt you. She's delirious, Doctor. Help me, somebody, please help me. We're going to try. What's ailing her, Doctor? Well, she's exhausted and starving. Aside from that, I can't tell. Let's get her to a wagon. Well, the only question is whose. Paul, how about ours? Well, the thing is, we're crowded already. Take her to mine. Uh, we all want to do our part. As soon as Dr. Miller finds out what's really ailing her, you tell us. Don't lose any sleep about it. We got a right to know what's been brought in among us. Good food and a long sleep. Almost 20 hours. You've been very kind to me, Sue. What's this? Well, Dr. Miller and Mr. Hale would like to talk to you, and I thought maybe you'd like to use these first. Jenna Douglas. What's today, Sue? Thursday. And the date? March 22nd. 1866. No. No, 1868. Oh, yes, of course, 1868. Well, how's my patient today? Just fine, Doctor. Thank you. Jenna Douglas, this is Chris Hale, our wagon master. How do you do? Miss Douglas? Or is it Mrs. Douglas? It's Mrs. But my husband's dead. I'll see you later, Jenna. Bye, Sue. Are you? But you would like to know how I'm out here all alone. We know telling us may be painful for you. Well, I, I hardly know where to begin. Well, uh, where did you come from, Mrs. Douglas? From? Oh, I was from Kirbyville. Hmm. That lay to the south of our route. I'd been a widow several years when my cousin and her husband asked me to go west with them to California. We'd been out two days. One night I went to the creek for water. I heard Helen scream and I heard some gunshots. I ran back to the camp, but I didn't go into the clearing. I saw Helen, Steve, and the children lying on the ground. There were some men. White men? Yes. Scavengers, probably. I hid in the underbrush, and I saw them take the wagon and the horses. I... I should have done something. What could an unarmed woman do? Are you in pain? No, it burns on my hands and arms. They've never quite healed. And after the men left? I, I went to Helen and the others. There was nothing I could do. I, I ran, I, I tried to get away. I ran, I walked, I did anything I could. I, I wished I was dead. The attack occurred on the 14th. You wandered around almost a week. I don't remember very much about the last couple of days. Well, now we know something of the past. What about the future? Mr. Hale, I would so like to stay with the wagon train. Well, you certainly go with us as far as Dawson. No. No, I mean, I want to go as far as California, if that's possible. Well, there are complications. I know I haven't got any money. I have nothing except the clothes I was wearing. 
But couldn't I work my way through? I'll be well in a couple of days. Mr. Hill, please, I have nothing or no one to go back to. Please. Well, let's just take it a step at a time. We won't be into Dawson for a week or ten days, and in the meantime, you just concentrate on getting your strength back. Well, at least you didn't say no. We'll let you get some rest. Thank you. strong enough. It's good to see where I'm going. Passed through some beautiful country the last couple of days. That's gone and forgotten. I only want to see what's ahead. Sometimes it is not possible for a person to appreciate what is ahead as he first understands what has passed. Does that amuse you? <laughs> no. It's not what you said, it's the way you said it. You sounded like a, a little old philosopher handing out advice on his 80th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm caught. I was quoting Dr. LeBeau. He was one of my professors in Europe. You went to school in Europe? Almost four years. I was lucky enough to work with some great men. Charco, Bernheim, Lebeau. They're making some exciting discoveries. The same way we're exploring this country, they're exploring the human body and the human mind. You all right? Yes. Yes, I just felt a little faint for a minute. Uh, I wish more doctors in this country knew what was being done over there for people who a few years ago were being locked away as hopelessly incurable. I wonder why a doctor with a European background should be out here. Wouldn't you do better in the East, in New York or Philadelphia? I wasn't interested in the society practice. Where are you going? Napa Valley. It's north of San Francisco. Napa Valley. Sounds so peaceful. It's beautiful. They're starting vineyards there. Acres and acres of them. You've been there then? I was out there first last year. You're going to stay with your cousin when you get to California? No, I wouldn't want to impose on Mary. I was going to get a job of some sort. But you said your cousin's name was Helen. Yes, of course. Helen. What did I say, Mary? What's the matter? Nothing. Your arms. They hurt you? I'm, I'm feeling a little tired. I think I'll lie down for a while. here. Well, I thought it was about time I lent a hand. From what Dr. Miller said, we didn't expect to see you before we got to Dawson. Uh, Mrs. Douglas, I would like you to meet Mrs. Diggs. How do you do? Whatever the doctor's been prescribing for you, I see it agrees. Good sleep and good food were all the medicine I needed. Well, we're having a pitch-in supper tonight, Jenna. What can I do? When that stew comes to boil, you can cut in the potatoes and onions. Maybe that kind of job don't suit you? No. Oh. Well, that's fine. Well, you shouldn't be without a shawl, Jenna. The one you let me is in the wagon. I'll get it for you. No, no. It's all right. I'll be right back. Lend a hand, she says. You know who will end up doing the job as usual. Oh, excuse me. I'm 
That's all right. You don't remember me. I'm one of the men that found you. Ed Lenders. Thank you, Mr. Lenders. Uh, you know how to say thanks better than that. Please. A woman like you knows how to show when she's grateful. Let go, please. Nobody can touch you but the doc, that it. Well, I ain't read no medical books, nor been to school in Europe. But I know something about you that the doc don't. What do you mean? I found something you lost. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? A kind of coat. What's the name they give it? Straight jacket, that is. <laughs> I was beginning to worry. Mm -hmm. Jenna, what's the matter? Mm -hmm. Jenna, we better get Dr. Miller. Oh, Jenna, look out the show. Why didn't you tell me about this, Linders? I found it. I figured it was nobody's business but my own. He ought to be horsewhipped. Never letting on the kind of woman she was. Lucky she didn't do more harm to herself or somebody else. I warned you not to let your girl spend so much time with her. I know. I should have listened. Why, Sue could have been killed. If she had of it, it would have been your fault, Linders. I didn't mean no harm. You better take that to the doctor so he can put her back into it. Where is he? Who? Ben. He was out there. I don't know what he'd been on this wagon train. No, of course you don't. It wasn't Ben. Couldn't be. Somebody with a crutch. It was Andy Green. Andy Green. The shawl. It was on fire. Is Sue all right? Is she hurt? No. Just a bump on the head. I have to see her. I wouldn't go out there, Jenna. But you don't understand. There's a man out there who may be telling lies about me. I want the people to know the truth. Were you in that hospital in Palmer Falls? Oh, I told you I'm from Kerberville. You're ill. Uh, I want to help you. <laughs> Can't you do something to stop the pain? I'm burning up. David. I think you better come out here. I can't leave her now. Just for a minute. <laughs> Jenna, I want you to rest here for a little while. I'll be right back. Woman. Hale, you tell him to put that thing back on her. Mrs. Douglas is my patient. I'll treat her as I think best. Either you put that jacket on her or tie her up. She's not violent. No, she's not, huh? Well, she made a bad lump on my girl's head. For some reason, Jenna was afraid of that fire. Now, when she knocked me down, she didn't know what she was doing. That's just it. Next time, she may kill somebody. Mrs. Douglas is ill. I think I can help her. All right, then send her back where she belongs. We don't want such as her on this train. If Jenna Douglas is going to jeopardize your safety, I'll see that she leaves the train. But I'll make the decision, nobody else. Now, suppose we all get back to our own jobs. Let me tend to mine. Chris, I don't want to make trouble for you. I'll leave the train with her tonight to keep peace. But I won't desert her or tie her up. You don't think she'd hurt anyone, do you? I'll see to it that she doesn't. Your know, word's good enough for me, Doctor. Thanks. And like I told her, we can decide what's best when we get to Dawson. Please don't let 
them send me back. How long were you in that hospital? It seemed like forever. But it was just under two years. What's that? To help you sleep. Oh, no, please. I don't want to sleep. Not just yet. Please. I never should have been in that hospital in the first place. I wasn't like the others. I tried to tell them that, but they wouldn't believe me. So I had to run away. You said you wanted to help me. And I meant it. Then, then please give me all the food and water you can spare and help me slip away tonight. I can't do that. Jenny, you wouldn't stand a chance out there alone. What kind of chance do I have if I stay with the train? The minute we get to Dawson, they'll turn me over to the authorities, and then they'll send me right back to Palmer Falls. I couldn't stand that. I'd rather be dead. Jenna, you're ill. No! You're ill, but you can be cured. And that's what they said when they sent me to that hospital. The hospital. It was more like a prison. The most decent thing they did was shave my head so I wouldn't be eaten alive by my own vermin. They had 23 of us in one room. 23 women in a room, maybe, maybe twice the size of this wagon. There wasn't a second, day or night, that someone wasn't moaning or crying. I thought I'd never get used to it. I thought I'd never get any sleep. But I did. I got used to it. That's the terrible thing. You get used to it. You get used to sleeping on a filthy straw mat, eating greasy stew, drinking dirty water. You get used to it because you know that if you complain, they'll beat you with a strap. Or put you down the cistern. Or chain you out in the courtyard, no matter what kind of weather. There was a girl. They put her out in the courtyard and forgot about her. Or said they did. Her feet froze. She was lucky, though. She died when they operated trying to fix them. You know what I thought? When I heard she was dead? I thought, now I can have her blanket. It's warmer than m mine. <laughs> Jenna, I know about these places. I just can't bear it any longer. I must have my freedom, please, please. Jenna, if I help you run away, and if by some chance you're able to survive out there, do you think you would really be free? I don't care. I don't care. Anything's better than the life I've had. Jenna, remember I told you that I'd studied in Europe with Charco, Bernheim, Lebo. Well, those names wouldn't mean anything to you, but, but those men have been working on new ways to help people whose minds are troubled, like yours. New, humane methods. I tried to talk to the doctor in the hospital. He didn't even listen to me. I will. Please, let me try. Please, Jenna. I know you wouldn't do anything to hurt me. sleep. Tomorrow we'll make a start. When do we start the treatment? Right now. Just start talking. What about? Anything, whatever comes in your head. Well, I don't know where to begin. What about your childhood? Any pleasant memory? Come from a large family? No. There were three of us children. Myself and two brothers. I was the oldest. My father was a lawyer. He was a wonderful man. Big and good looking. Had the most powerful voice. I can still hear him say, 
And how is my girl, Jenna? What has she done with her day? What about your mother? Oh, she was beautiful, but not strong. She depended on me a great deal. She used to say I was more the lady of the house than she was. Your brothers must have depended on you, too. Mm -hmm. Especially Tim. He was the youngest. You know, he would have drowned once if it hadn't been for me. He got caught in a whirlpool, and I jumped in, and together we managed to get to the shallow water. That was a brave thing to do, when you might have both been drowned. Oh, I didn't think anything about it at the time, but afterwards everyone tried to make a heroine out of me. I only did what I should have. What was right. You're a lucky person, Jenna. Not many of us can feel that we've never failed those who rely on us. Anyone would try to save the person they loved, wouldn't they? After your mother's death, how long did you keep house for your father? Till I was... Till I was married. Ben had a little farm just outside of town. I'd like to hear about your husband. How can I tell you about Ben? He was... He was six foot four and straighter than a young pine. And so strong. On our wedding day, the neighbors gave us a shivery, you know. But they kept catching up to us. We, we couldn't seem to get rid of them. Finally, Ben just scooped me up in his arms and he started to run. He must have run a mile. I can still remember the way his arms felt around me. And I could feel his heart beating. Not wild, but steady and sure. Finally, we lost the others and we stopped to rest in a grove of wild plums. Not that Ben was tired. Ben was never tired. Must have been a good marriage. Sometimes, sometimes I think those days and nights with Ben never happened. Or that they happened to some other woman. No, they happened to me. Can you believe it was a pleasure just to watch him breathe? I used to wake up in the mornings before he did, and, and I'd raise up in the quiet, and I'd watch the pulse in his throat, just here. And he'd open his eyes, and he'd see me and smile, and, and there'd be nothing, nothing in the whole world except the two of us. Two weeks later, he was gone. The war? I wrote to him every day. He wrote as often as he could. Was he killed in action? Yes. Yes, he was killed. Some place far off. A, a place I never heard of. I never saw the Ben who left me again. Since then, there's never been anyone else? No. After you've loved someone perfect, how can you accept anything less? Oh, oh my head and my poor blistered hands. Let me see, Jenna. There's nothing you can do. They'll never heal. They'll never heal. They'll never heal. different kinds of food we get, we always end up eating beans. Charlie's got a knack for making everything taste like beans. <laughs> well, doctor? Oh. Stopped early today, Chris. Well, we're going through some pretty rough country tomorrow. I wanted to give the horses a little extra rest. And how are you, Mrs. Douglas? Very much better, Mr. Hale. Thank you. See you out and around, ma'am.
and let them bother you. They're really good people. I don't care what they think or do. There's only one person in the world who means anything to me now. This really meant it when he said there was rough country ahead. Today? I guess I've said all there is to say. I can't believe that. We've never gone past the point when your husband died. What happened to you after that? Nothing. I mean, I, I just went on living. Then why were you committed to the hospital? Why, Jenna? Because of the burns on my hands and arms. The burns that won't heal? Yes. How did you get those burns, Jenna? There was a fire. I, I was burned. I guess I was delirious. That's why they put me in the hospital. Strange there's no scar tissue. Why can't you bear to look at Andy Green? I don't even know who Andy Green is. The night your shawl caught fire, he tried to help you. You thought it was Ben. Ben? He doesn't even look like Ben. I want to go back to the wagon. Not yet. Please. Your husband wasn't killed in the war, was he? Yes, I told you. Wasn't he wounded, crippled? I had this letter. Regret, it said. Killed in action, it said. I read it over and over, and it, it didn't make sense to me. Old people died. Sick people, like Mama. But not Ben. There it was in the letter. You can't argue with a letter. So finally, I accepted it. I buried Ben in my mind. I pictured him dead, looking the way he had when he lay next to me. They'd taken him from me, but I still had the memory, clean and perfect. Go on. About three months later, after the war was over, I got another letter. It had all been a mistake. Ben was alive. He'd been in a prison hospital. Oh, it was like a miracle. My Ben alive and coming back to me from the dead. Did you go to him? No. No, they sent him home. It was one of those quiet, heavy days in August. I remember hearing the cry of a mourning dove. There was a sound of wheels in the drive. There were two soldiers on the seat of an army wagon, but neither one of them was Ben. I remember. One of them had a black patch over his eye, and I felt sorry for him. I kept wondering where Ben was, and suddenly I realized this was an ambulance. They were bringing my husband home in an ambulance. I think Black Patch tried to prepare me, but I wouldn't listen to him. I ran around to the back of the wagon and lifted the flap. First, I couldn't see, but I could hear Ben's voice calling my name. I leaned in closer. In the, in the hospital in Palmer's Falls, there was a woman who kept making drawings on the wall. She would draw figures of men, only she was a very careless artist. And as she drew, she would sometimes forget to give them a nose, her eyes, sometimes even an arm or a leg. On that stretcher in the back of the wagon was a... was a... thing that looked like it had been the model for all those scrawls made by that demented woman. It was... it was calling my name and reaching out to me with what the grape shot had left of its right arm. Go on, Jenna. I didn't scream or faint or run away. The two soldiers lifted the stretcher and took it into the house. I offered them whiskey, tea, dinner, anything to put off the time when I'd have to be alone with him. But it didn't work. And pretty soon the wagon was rolling down the road. I stood on the porch and watched them go. 
not hearing at first the voice that called to me. It was so much like the morning dove. Was he completely helpless? He had crutches, the gift of a grateful government. With the aid of those, he could support himself on his left leg. But it seemed to tire him rather quickly, and he didn't make the effort too often. He only seemed content to look at me. No matter what I did, even in the darkness, when he was laying on his bed and I on mine, I could feel him staring at me with, with that face. You reconciled yourself to looking after him? Well, at first it was bearable. And then gradually he became more and more demanding. I knew I had obligations. But I could only feel pity. I was ashamed of myself. But you see, to me, my husband was dead. He sensed this, and it made him hate and despise what he was. So he turned on me. He accused me of being unfaithful. He, he accused me of plotting to get rid of him, even trying to kill him. Did you ever think of getting help? Where? He didn't have any more family left, and neither did I. I was his wife. He was my responsibility. Oh, I don't think I can go on. It hurts so. Jenna, you mustn't hold back now. One day, one day I had to go into town for supplies. I had to leave him. On the way back, I saw the smoke, and then the house, it was blazing. When I got there, I, I tried to get in and help him, but I couldn't. The fire was too hot. That's how I burned my hands and arms. He died in that fire, and there was nothing I could do. Nothing. Now you know the whole story. Are you satisfied? No, I'm not. I don't believe you, Jenna. Well, you ask for the truth, and when you get it, you don't believe me. You're lying. Well, I don't care whether you believe me or not. You're not only lying to me, you're lying to yourself. Let me go. Not until we get into the truth. Where were you when the fire started? I told you, I was in town for supplies. You weren't in town. You were right there in the room with him, weren't you? No. Weren't you? No. The fire started because of something you did. Something you did. No, no, no. I just wanted to get out and get some air. Breathe. You just wanted to get some air. I took him his supper. He was quiet and gentle. He got me off guard. Suddenly, he reached out and grabbed hold of my hand. I didn't do anything. I just stood there. That made him madder. He started screaming at me, yelling, you icy-hearted tramp. I went through misery to come back to you. You're my wife. Act like it. Oh, I didn't mean to say what I did. I didn't mean to give words to all the things I'd thought since that day when I first looked in the back of that wagon. I didn't mean to, but my feelings just kept boring out. What did he do? His fingers loosened a little, and I stepped back. He's trying to get up. He's trying to get up off the couch. He's groping for his crutches. I turn and run. I hear the sound of glass breaking. He's, he's calling, screaming my name. I don't stop. I keep running. The night air feels cool. I run to the hill in back of the house, and I, I fall there. Oh, I, I feel so sick. Jenna, you must go on. Did I smell the smoke or hear the crackle of the flames first? I set up. The house is on fire. It, it's blazing. That must have been the glass I heard breaking, the, the lamp next to his bed. I should go down there. I should, I should do something. Even if I die trying to save him, anyone would try and save the person they love. But you didn't try. Yes, I, I must have. No. No, I didn't. I just sat there. I just sat and watched those awful flames. And I did nothing. I let him die, and I did nothing. Afterwards, when the fire was out, it seemed to me that I must have done something, because there were burns on, 
blisters on my hands and arms. But they wouldn't believe me. They wouldn't listen. They said I started the fire because I wanted to be rid of him. It's not true. It's not true. Of course, it's not true. But I did wish him dead. So in a way, they were right. They were not right. You can't blame yourself for what happened. I could have saved him. Jenna, listen to me. You did all you could, all anyone could. A good wife would have done more. You were a good wife. You can't spend the rest of your life punishing yourself. Life and the war played a cruel trick on you, but now the agony's over. Now there's pain in the memory, of course. There probably always will be. But it's bearable because it's not real. You know it's not real. Yes. Not real like this mountain. Like these trees. Like your plans for the future. No. I believe that there's nothing as real as this moment. And being here with your arms around. hoping you'd let Jenna continue with the train. I don't know. She's perfectly all right. No threat to anyone. Well, maybe I'm thinking of what's best for her. The way you tell it, it was quite a shock picturing a man as a perfect husband and then being forced to live with what was only a mockery. That's right. Well, we wouldn't want that same thing to happen again, would we? How could it? What are you to Jenna Douglas, David? I'm her doctor. No more than that? Well, just now she's feeling a certain dependency on me. That can happen with a doctor and a patient when they're going through something like this. And what happens when she can't depend on you anymore? Well, by the time she has to face that, we'll have given her back her self-confidence. Can she go on with us? I'll still wait till we get to Dawson to answer that. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you feeling? Much better, thank you. I thought I'd give these things a good airing as long as we've stopped. Doctor not around? No, he went to see Mr. Hale about my passage to California. Oh, he's taking you right on to California? Mm-hmm. Wonder what his wife will think about that. Didn't he tell you about his wife? Her and the two children are waiting out there for him. Funny, he wouldn't tell you. He showed all the rest of us their pictures. Carries them in that medical bag of his. Beautiful woman. You're no prettier than you. You feeling poorly? Maybe you've overdone yourself?
No. You know you're not supposed to go out nowhere without the doc. <laughs> What's the matter? You two have a fight? Please, let me alone. <laughs> don't you fret. I'm going to look after you. <laughs> he don't know how to handle a woman like you. <laughs> but you and me, we're going to get along fine. <laughs> Linus, let her be. You hear me? Let her be. How are you feeling, Andy? Just fine, Doc. Don't let on to Mrs. Douglas, though. I'm enjoying this care she's giving me too much. Go. <laughs> Think you'd mind if I took her out for a little fresh air? No, I guess that'd be all right. You'd be all right for a while without me? Just fine, thanks. <sighs> Coffee? No, thank you. Jenna. Hmm? I, uh, didn't mean to lead you on and then disillusion you. Oh, David, you didn't lead me on. You were strong and gentle. All the things I'd been looking for for so long and hadn't been able to find. For a while, I forgot that you were a doctor treating a patient. And I only thought of you as a man. And I thought I was in love with you because I needed to know that I could love somebody. It hasn't always been easy to think of you as just a patient. If things were different... But they aren't. And my doctor tells me to look at the truth and learn to live with it. Evening. Good evening, Mr. Hale. Duke said you wanted to see me. Yes, about Jenna's passage west. Yes? I have a sister that lives in Monterey. I'm sure she'll be happy to have Jenna stay with her for a while. And I've got friends in business there. They'll be able to help her find some sort of suitable work. Sounds like everything's all worked out. Except for one small thing. What? I'm not going. I thought it's what you wanted. Oh, David, it would be so easy for me to let you and your sister and your friends make a new life for me. I'm sure it would be a very good life. But it wouldn't be mine. I'll be leaving the train at Dawson. It's up to you. I have to go back to...